uh, the so-called doomsday mom, of course, accused of killing her two youngest children. And it was a very emotional day in court, a forensic pathologist revealing the causes of death of J.J. Vallow and also uh, another uh, key victim in this uh, as well. Let's talk about this even further with Fox 10 Phoenix investigative reporter Justin Lum with the latest. Uh, Justin, good to see you. Uh, walk us through what happened today in court. It was very emotional. Yeah, very heavy day, Andrew. And again, we want to warn everyone at home that the details presented in court are very graphic. Not only are we learning about the death of J.J. Vallow, but his big sister, Tylee Ryan, as well. Now, Dr. Garth Warren, who did the autopsies, took the stand today. Warren is the Ada County Coroner and Chief Forensic Pathologist. He told the court that J.J. died of asphyxiation by a white plastic bag placed over his head and duct tape over his mouth. Warren determined J.J. was smothered and he found signs of a struggle. Here's the last verified photo of JJ taken on September 22nd, 2019, recovered from Lori Vallow's iCloud account. By June of 2020, investigators found the remains of JJ and Tylee in the backyard of Vallow's husband, Chad Daybell. Now, JJ was found in those same red pajamas with his arms and ankles bound with duct tape. As for Tylee Ryan, it was a homicide, according to Dr. Warren, but there is no specific cause of death. Her remains were burned, basically torn apart to pieces and buried in the ground. Warren said these are clearly suspicious circumstances, saying Tylee's organs were severely decomposed and her bones were charred. Take a listen to the coroner talk about the causes of death, first for JJ and then Tylee. I determined the cause of death to be asphyxia by plastic bag over the head and duct tape covering the mouth. And then there's another segment that's other significant conditions. Um, I put bound with duct tape, bruising of the arms, and abrasion to the neck. The cause of death was by homicide, but I just can't pinpoint exactly what that was. Most homicides, you can say something like a gunshot wound to the head when the body's intact or a stab wound to the heart. Um, I can't do that in this case. Okay, Justin, a few more questions, though, that I have for you because this was such an important day in the testimony. Um, what else, though, th did the autopsy reveal? Something about drugs in JJ's system, right? Yeah, that is an important part of that. There was uh, a controlled substance found, but as for the evidence, it was inconclusive to determine if it was given to him or if it was a naturally occurring product. This drug is supposed to basically uh, have a calming effect on someone, a euphoric effect. Uh, as we know, the last witness to ever see J.J. Uh, in the home of Lori Vallow was her old friend, David Warwick. He says he saw, saw J.J. in the arms of Alex Cox, Lori's late brother, carrying him in uh, quite possibly those pajamas and carrying him up to bed. Uh, was he asleep? We don't know, but that was really the last sighting. Okay, what about uh, as well, Tylee, anything else uh, about her autopsy? Well, right now, a forensic pathologist with the FBI is on the stand. She will continue her testimony tomorrow morning. She did a CT scan of Tylee's skeletal remains. And so far, she has been talking about finding sharp trauma, high-velocity trauma, and blunt trauma to the bones. We have heard in the past that she was uh, potentially dismembered, but we're going to find out more exactly about what was left of those remains. Again, charred, burned, basically in, in pieces. This is going to be a tough details for the jury to absorb. But once again, another forensic pathologist testifying, really giving us more insight uh, into the death of Tylee Ryan, who right now we don't know exactly how she was killed, but it was murder. Okay, uh, and then again, Tammy Daybell, Chad's former wife. Uh, do we know uh, her cause of death? Is that inconclusive or has it just not been presented in court? Well, for these three victims, two of the three, JJ and Tylee, have both been determined to officially die of asphyxiation. Now, her body was exhumed in Utah. The Utah medical examiner did that autopsy. We have not heard from the Utah medical examiner, anyone from that office to testify yet. 
you could expect that to happen so we can find out similar details uh, similar to the playbook of what the prosecution has presented so far but as of right now we know JJ and Tammy have died of asphyxiation Tylee Ryan an unspecified cause but definitely homicide and this was really a crucial strategic move for the prosecution coming off yesterday's powerful testimony by Summer Shiflett, Lori's sister, that bombshell phone call, really the emotionally charged part of it, and then really bringing the facts and the evidence here today. These jurors looking at monitors right in front of them of these graphic photos. You know, and Justin, I want to uh, bring up a tweet uh, that you uh, had referenced here as well. I want to put this up here. Uh, and you tweeted this. You said, Kay and Larry Woodcock streaming our coverage of the Lori Vallow trial from Boise. Extremely hard details to take in, but they have shown so much strength from day one. Have you had a chance to speak to them uh, after today's uh, tragic revelations? I haven't been able to speak to them too much. It's obviously been a tough day. They were not in the courtroom for all of the evidence. And as you can imagine how hard that's been, Larry Woodcock did, to see, did get to see some of the evidence in the first week, the autopsy photos of J.J. Vallow. Really, they just want justice. They have seen a lot. And you can see there on that table, Larry has that glass of bourbon. That's really how he has somewhat coped with this. And he tells you, he'll tell you he's not a drinker, but this has been such a heavy, heavy trial for them emotionally, mentally. It has been draining. So, uh, you know, as you can see there, they're trying to stay focused staying strong there's still a lot of uh, trial to go no that's so that's so true uh speaking of the long trial to go i mean what's up next uh how can uh you really just match the really harsh emotion of what happened there today tomorrow more witnesses right yeah, definitely more witnesses. Could we see a possible two to three weeks left of witnesses? Again, you have that forensic pathologist with the FBI that takes the stand once again tomorrow. We have not heard from the niece of Melan, uh, niece of Lori Vallow, Melanie Pulowski, because remember, Lori's lawyers have said that she has alibis for the days that these victims were killed. One of them being that she was in Hawaii with her niece, Melanie Pulowski, uh, when Tammy Daybell died on October 19, 2019. So what will Melanie have to say about that day? I know the prosecution plans to call on her. Uh, could one of Chad Daybell's family members be called on to, to testify? I mean, really, there are a lot of possibilities here. The prosecution um, definitely has a long list. They're getting through it pretty quickly. They're getting through the heavy stuff. They put up their key witnesses up first. The defense, don't really know. They might have a short list. Is the defense playing really no defense and, and letting this all just unfold and see, see what the jury thinks? Uh, that has yet to be determined. All right, Justin Lum, uh, thank you so much for that report. We'll rely on your uh, continued reporting as this trial goes on, and we'll talk again. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew.